Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Excited about what God is doing. Let me strip off all the junk so I won't be throwing stuff all over the place. Amen. It's good to be in the house of God. Amen. Turn the lights on, y'all. All right. I'm just going to say it's a um, privilege to be here today before God's people. And um, for those who are new, you know, this is a what we call Celebration Sunday, where we acknowledge different things that's happening in the church. And um, it's just a blessing, a blessing to, to see that God's work is true and that we are doing what he's called us to do. Now, let me just start off by saying this. I know you, um, if, you're, if you're, this is your first time, you hadn't been here before, we usually have, um, this is called All In Sunday, where all the kids come in church. Amen? They need to learn how to act in public settings. Amen. You ever been to a movie and just people just acting crazy and watch out, watch out, duck. They need to learn how to act in public settings. Amen. Now, I'm just going to say, if, if you're new, I'm just going to tell you, I'm just me. Okay, I'm not going to try to woo you and, and act like I'm holier than thou. And, you know, God is God and, and we're who we are. You know, when God saves you, he doesn't take away your personality. He doesn't take away any of those things from you. You're still who you are. Amen. So don't try to imitate nobody else. Be who you are. And I'm going to tell you, so if you don't be you, I'm going to be me. <laughs> Amen. All right, so, um, you know, so this is teaching them how to act in public settings. I know growing up in church and stuff, we used to, um, they would threaten me by one or two things. One of the things they would threaten me with is that pinch. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You had that grandmama that would pinch you if you act up in church. The other thing they would threaten me with is you can't get that quarter to buy ice cream. Oh, yeah, I'm that old. Well, ice cream was a quarter. The big, um, what do you call them? The, the big, what do you Rainbow popsicle, the big, the big old thing. You can barely even eat them. You, by the time you get to the first part, it was dripping all down your hand. And, you know, yeah, and that, those, those were a quarter, but they would threaten me and say, I'm not giving you ice cream money this week if you act a fool in church or go to sleep. I'd be like, and that dude, my, well, he was born. He was boring. But anyway, praise God. Amen. But it's a blessing to be in the house of God. So just, just get in and, and just have church and just get what God has for you. It's a, um, it's a privilege to be in the house of God. All right, so we're going to talk about something today that's um, a, a, something that's near and dear to, to my heart, and every believer is here. We're going to talk about the pillars of the church. Now, saying that, you know, you, um, people are used to church being a certain way. And um, even today, some people made comments about communion. We're doing communion again? You know, the Bible says this. It said, do it as often. As you will. It don't matter. We can do it every week. But um, so it, it doesn't matter how often we do it. But he said, when you do it, do this in remembrance of me. Amen. So it's not a, not a set time. And I know sometimes we do it. Not sometimes. We do it on the first Sunday. But, but there's no designated time. He didn't say do it on this week and do it that week and skip three weeks. And no, that, that's not biblical. He said that whenever you want to do it, do it in remembrance of me. So, you know, just, just some of the, the, the church stuff and some of the religious practices, some of that stuff, I'm just going to be honest with you, you need to throw it out the window. Because some of it's not biblical. Now, don't get me wrong, some traditions are cool, but some of them are just straight up not biblical. So, having said that, um, you know, we just have to just, just, just listen and, and see what the Lord has for us, because God wants to speak to us. You know, as a pastor, you, you, you get prepared and you, and, you, and you pray and you see what God wants and you can always tell how the message is going to go by the attendance in church. You know, there's a time when God wants to speak to his people. Amen? Amen. And, and, and some of the other folks just don't make it. <laughs> but the thing is that we're here to, to give you the word of God and always just be open to, to hear what the Lord has for you. Um, just getting ready and stuff. I was, I'm always checking stuff. I didn't even take communion, so don't think I'm in sin or nothing. Amen? They, well, I saw pastor, he didn't take communion. Is he in living in sin? No, I'm not. I just forgot to get a thing because so much going on. And, you know, I, I, just, I just always, you know, try to make sure everything is right. You know something that was real dirty we used to do to each other in seminary? We would have like a student service and the different preachers would preach. And the brothers would take your outline before you went up to speak. So I, 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 that's still all in me. I know. Can you imagine that pu speaking publicly and somebody took your notes? But they would do that because they say, don't be married to the paper. You should be able to preach. You should know your message before you even get up behind the pulpit. But I always have to check it because I'm like, I don't know if somebody stole my message. Let me, let me make sure. <laughs> so I'm always crossing the I's and, and dotting the T's and, and checking to make sure everything is, is good. 
But, but yeah, we're going to um, preach the word of God today, and we're going to the book of Acts. Not Acts, like chopping wood. Acts. Amen. A-C-T-S. Now, a little bit about the book of Acts before. This is just a, a crash course in theology today about the book of Acts. A lot of churches try to mimic what the book of Acts says, but when you look at the title, it's the Acts of the Apostles. It's not the acts of the modern day church that we're living in right now. And a lot of people think that there's certain things that went on in the book of Acts that they should still be happening today. Now, as we read and we study the scriptures, um, we're going to talk about the 12 that Jesus called and he called them apostles. Now, you can believe what you want. All right. So I'm I'm not trying to because I know people. I don't believe that. Well, that's fine. You believe what you want. Um, But personally. Knowing what I know about the Bible and reading scripture and studying the Bible extensively, I don't feel that there's any modern day apostles. People call themselves that. Now, to be honest with you, I can call myself the um, reincarnation of Fats Domino. (laughs) I found my thrill. But that doesn't make me that. Amen. You can call yourself whatever you want, but that doesn't make you that. So nowadays people do that and they throw around these these religious terms and and um, and call me bishop and call me this and call me that. What's wrong with your name? You're so insecure that you want people to call you something so you can have value. I tell people all the time, you don't have to call me pastor. Call me low. That's fine. Amen. That's okay. God knows who we are. Amen. And it's time out for all of this religious junk, and we have to call things like they are when we know what the Bible says. And that's what they, what they count on. They count on you not knowing the Bible so they can manipulate you, so they can use you, so they can have some kind of high esteem and, and make you bow down and worship them and carry their Bible and bring them water. That's wrong. Amen. Jesus said, if anybody you, uh, among you is going to be great, let him be your servant. These people don't serve Leroy. They don't do nothing for the church. They because they come serve me. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the pillars of the church. Amen. That was free. All right. All right. The pillars of the church. Now, when you go to the book of Judges, there was a, a man by the name of Samson. Y'all know who Samson was? The strong dude that, that did things and, and killed all the Philistines with a jawbone and all that kind of stuff. But Samson At the end of his life, when the Philistines finally put out his eyes and they made sport of him, they put him in the middle of the temple and he asked one of the guys, he said, put me between the two pillars so I can um, have judgment and and I can have avenge and I can avenge myself on the Philistines who've done all these things to me. And he placed his hands on the two pillars and he pushed the pillars and the pillars made the whole building fall. So saying that, I'm saying that there's pillars in Christianity and there's pillars in the church and there's pillars in your life that if they're not erected and if they're not standing, you won't be a Christian very long. Now, this is something that as a believer, you need to get this in your soul. Now, when I was in, 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 um, in seminary, I did construction. And um, I first started off insulating houses. And then they walk you through and they train you to be able to... Um, to be able to know which walls that should be insulated. Now, knowing what walls should be insulated, there are exterior walls. These are the walls that should be insulated. You don't insulate interior walls unless it's for sound. And also, when you know these things, you know what needs to be. And these certain walls, there's something that they call them in construction. Brother Norman, I'm sure you know this. They're called load-bearing walls. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about? These are certain walls that are in this construction of this um, this place or this building that if you knock down that wall, the whole structure will collapse. Now, I don't know if these are load bearing, but I'm not going to be the one to test the theory. Amen. (laughs) So the thing is, what I'm saying is that as a Christian and as a believer in Christ and as somebody who follows the Bible, there's certain things that God erects in your life. If you don't have them, again, you won't be a Christian very long and your Christianity will be shallow. And the devil can come and he can huff and puff and he'll blow your house down. Amen. So having said that, let's go to Acts chapter 2, the book of Acts chapter 2. I'm going to read a few verses starting at verse 42. 
Acts chapter 2, verse 42. All right. And again, these are the acts of the apostles. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as everyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Amen. Let's pray. Father, right now, we just thank you. Your word is true, God. God, we honor you, we praise you. We thank you for each person that's here today. We just pray, God, as we study your word today that we can understand that there are pillars in our faith that you demand for us to have. Do a work today that will last throughout eternity. God, we know that there are people that are here today that may not know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. God, it's our sincere prayer that you bless them, God that you would open their eyes spiritually so they can know the things that you would have for them to do. We thank you for all that you're doing in our midst. Bless the church today, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So reading here in the book of Acts, we see that there were some cert- there were certain things that were going on in the early church. Now, knowing the things that took place in the book of Acts, there was an initial spark that had to get the church going. And the reason I made those statements about apostles is because the things that the apostles did in those days, people have not been able to duplicate since. These men were so entrenched and so empowered by God that if they walked by you, the shadow of them passing you would heal you. They could open blind eyes. They could open the deafened ears. They could raise people from the dead. They could do all of these miraculous things. And when they preached, the word of God was so powerful that thousands of people at a time would get saved. Now, the reason I made that statement about early church and, and, and apostles and different things is because people get it mixed up. Now, in the book of Revelation chapter 2, when when Jesus was speaking about and talking to the church at Ephesus, there were some things that he said that they should do, and you can go back and check this yourself. And he was saying that you have tested those who call themselves apostles, and you found them liars. Amen? Amen? See, what happened to the days when people would test folks in the church? What happened to the days when when if a pastor was running around and sleeping around on his wife and and he was disqualified from ministry, that somebody would stand up and they would say, hey, we're not going to go out like this. We know that you're not living right. We're going to find us another church to go to. But it seems like nowadays, Gina, that the scandals are, are what brings people to church. And it's the blind that lead the blind. And Jesus said when that happens, both people are going to fall in the ditch. When you're following people that are not doing right, it's not God's fault. You have the Bible, amen? You have the scriptures. You have spiritual eyes. You know what the word of God says. And right is right and wrong is wrong. I don't care what the culture says. And God has not changed. See, we have to realize that the same God that looked at the wickedness of man and said, I will destroy man off the face of the earth, is the same God that we serve today. 
The same God that looked down at a wicked city that was so wicked that the prayers of people came up before him. The same God that says, you know what? I need you, Abraham, and Lot, to get out of that city because I'm going to destroy it. See, people don't want to acknowledge this God. All they think about Coco is the God of love. And he's so merciful and he loves me. And God understands, yeah, he understands that his son died on an old rugged cross so that you don't have to live in sin. Yes, he understands that he left the splendor of heaven and he came down here and he went through a harsh life and he did things that other people didn't do and he poured out of himself and he gave his life for you not to be able to sin. He understands that. Sin is a choice. You didn't slip up and do it. Amen. It's a choice. It's a choice to live for God. That's why one of the greatest things in heaven is that you're not going to have to worry about people just slipping up and getting there because everybody that's there is going to be because they decided to follow Jesus and there's no turning back. I don't care what happens. I'm going to follow Jesus. If everybody drops out of the race, I'm going to keep running. Why? Because the Lord saved me. I told my wife years ago, I said, honey, if I stop running for Jesus, you keep running. Don't allow my fall to keep you out of heaven. Amen. Now, there's some things we want to deal with. We're talking about the pillars of Christianity. Now, I've spoken about this in extensive terms. I got to take this thing. I'm starting to get hot. Sorry. (laughs) Amen. Sorry, my tattoos are showing. I wasn't always saved, y'all. Amen. I've had people look at me and be like, oh, you're a pastor. You got tattoos. Yeah. Amen. My ears are pierced, too. You mess around and see me. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> mess around and see me in Walmart. I'm going to have some studs in there. But anyway, yeah. You know, I thought about doing that years ago. I said I was going to come to church one day, and I was going to wear some old gangster gear and have my earrings on and, and let my tattoos show and see who was going to be like, I'm going to get up and walk out because I don't like that. You know, God saves people. And if you read the Bible, now I'm just going to tell you what the Bible says. Oh, you shouldn't get tattoos. It's a sin. Where is that in the Bible? Amen. Now, it does say this, that you shouldn't mark your body for the dead and all those kind of things. But you ain't doing it for that. Amen. Anyway, you just, I don't want to go because people want to be. Amen. All right. So when I talk about the pillars of the church and the pillars of Christianity, there's some things that, that need to be examined. And I've talked to you guys about this in extensive, extensive fashion. Um, there's some things that you need. Number one, you need a church. A Christian without a church is an orphan. And God has no orphans in his kingdom. Amen. Now, you need a church because there needs to be some kind of way that you can be disciplined I know that's not a, even a thing that, that I'm, ain't nobody going to whip you now. And I'm just talking about like church discipline. When you're not doing the right thing and all of these different things, somebody should be able to pull you aside and talk to you. Now, people don't like that. Don't get in my business, preacher. But God's in your business. And he calls people and puts people in your life to help you. You ever been there, been going astray and doing the wrong thing, and you thought everything was okay, and all of a sudden somebody pulled you aside, and they shook you and said, hey, you need to wake up. You're going down the wrong road. You're messing up in your life. You're not doing the right thing. And all of a sudden you woke up. Thank God for people like that that's not afraid to pull you aside and say, hey, you're not doing the right thing. You're going to lose your soul. You're not going to do what's right. And God is not pleased with you. Thank God for people like that. Amen. That'll pull you aside and speak to you in love. That's a different thing with somebody's old stinking hypocrite and they just trying to make you feel bad. That's a different thing. Because some folks like to run their mouth and they not living it. And Jesus said it like this. He said, take the beam out of your own eye. 
And then you can see clearly to take the, the stick out of your neighbor's eye. The problem is, is that people can see everything else. They can see somebody else's sin. They can see somebody else's problems. They can see somebody else's um, inconsistency. But they don't look in a mirror. See, and James, and when they don't pray and look in the mirror, see, God will always make you examine yourself. And if you're married, you can say amen to that. When you go trying to tell, uh, tell God on your spouse, and God be like, well, what about you? He done that to me so many times, man. But anyway, <laughs> praise God. All right. So the pillars of the church. So there's a few things we're going to talk about today, y'all, on the outline. All right, so as a part of the church, I must know and live my Bible. As a part of the church, I must know and live my Bible. And I'm going to start off here with Luke chapter 6, verses 13 through 19. And again, talking about apostles and different things, but, but I'm showing you this because people get tricked because they don't know the Bible. And then they give these people some kind of some lofty expectations and they look at these people higher than they should be because they don't know the scriptures. Luke chapter 6, verses 13 through 19. And when it was day, he called his disciples to himself, talking about Jesus. And from them... He chose 12, whom he also named apostles. Now, let me stop right there and just, just break down a few little things. Number one, you know Jesus had way more disciples than just 12? He had hundreds of disciples. But there were 12 people that he specifically chose and he did one-on-one -on -one training with them, and they followed him everywhere he went. Now, I don't know what, what qualifications he looked at to choose them. Amen. And the thing is that we don't know why God chooses certain people, but the reality is that God chooses people. And the sad thing about it is some of you sitting right here today, God has chosen you for a specific purpose, for a specific reason, and I don't know what you're waiting on. You're waiting on somebody to give you a, a go-ahead or whatever. You can do what God called you to do without having somebody just give you some kind of push. Amen. 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 You don't need my approval to do what God called you to do. But again, make sure it's God. Because everybody's not called to do God's will in a certain capacity. Again, it says here that he chose the 12 and he named them apostles skipping down and he came down with them and stood on the level place from a crowd of his disciples again he had a lot of disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and all from around the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him and he healed of their diseases as well as those who were tormented with unclean spirits and they were healed and the whole multitude sought to touch him, for power went out of him and healed them all. Jesus called apostles. Now, the true definition of, a, of an apostle is someone who actually walked with Jesus and they received their calling into the ministry from Jesus himself directly. That jacked up dude that you went to his church and he called himself an apostle, Jesus didn't appear to him. I'm sorry. And the thing is about it is that when God does that, and when Jesus does that, it's not going to be in some corner where nobody sees but you. Amen? He's going to do it in the presence of many witnesses. And that's why there was a whole big debate in the early church about Paul. Because guess what? Judas had betrayed Jesus. And they were looking for another person to fill one of the twelve. Amen? If it wasn't that important and everybody in their mammy could be called an apostle, then why did they go through that extensive process? And the apostle Paul was on his way to the D Damascus. And guess what? There was a light that shone around him. And everybody saw it. Sister Adeline and the 
voice came from heaven, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he said, who are you, Lord? And he said, it's Jesus. And people saw it. God does nothing in a corner, amen? He's going to do it for the world to see. And you as a believer need to understand, if you give your life to Christ, if you give your life to God, stop being afraid to let your light shine. Let the light shine that everybody can see and stand up boldly and say, yes, I'm a Christian. Now, yes, I'm a follower of Christ. Yes, I've been saved. Yes, I've been redeemed. It doesn't matter who knows it. I'm saved by the power of God. Yeah. Don't be ashamed of your Christianity. Amen. Because Jesus said it like this, if you're ashamed of me before man, then I'm going to be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. Matthew chapter 19, verse 28. So Jesus said to them, Assuredly I say to you that in this generation when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, who do you think them 12 people are? It ain't that jacked up dude who used to go to his church that calls himself an apostle. It's the 12 that Jesus called. And, you can, and again, I'm not, you can believe what you want to believe. You can believe the moon is made of green cheese. That's you. Amen. Because people always say, well, I don't believe that. And you got all your opinions and all that. Well, you believe what you want. But I'm going to tell you this. There's a problem when somebody always wants this undue recognition. You ever meet somebody like that? You call them, hey, so-and-so. I'm so-and-so. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> okay. And I get it. You earned it. But, hey, man, let your, let your work speak for themselves. Amen. You ain't always got to go around blowing your horn and talking about everybody. Oh, look at me, and I've done this, this. Yeah. All right. So as a part of the church, I must know and live my Bible. All right, number two, as a part of the church, I must practice corporate worship. As a part of the church, I must practice corporate worship. Preacher, what do you mean by corporate worship? Go into church. Amen. And I'm not talking about sitting in your living room watching T.D. Jakes on BET. That's not going to church. Amen. I, it's, it's understandable if you had to go to work and you can't get to church. Now, God, and, and trust me, God understands all that. But when you just want to lay in your bed and eat your Eggo waffles, and um, come on now. There's something about going to the house of God. Can somebody say Amen. There's something about being there. Now, you can believe what you want, but the Bible tells us that we need to go to church. Some of y'all ever been to a concert? Isn't it? I'm, I was going to say, let, let, me, let, me, let me get the right dick, you know, the right, the right. You have to, it's something different about actually being there. I remember the first concert I went to, it was, it was in Last Stadium, y'all. It was in, um, it was, well, he, he wasn't um, Will Smith then. He was Jazzy Jeff, and he was the Fresh Prince. Will Smith was there, J.J. Fad. Some of y'all L.A. folks, you know who that is. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> J.J. Fad, and we're here. It was him, J.J. Fad, Queen Latifah was there. Um, who else was there? I think um, Digital Underground and, and the Humpty Dance. All, all of them was in the thing. So I, I, I went to the concert, and I'm, when I tell you something, Dougie Fresh was there. He opened up the whole concert. And when I tell you, he got there, and it was all last day, and it was full filled with people. He got up there, and he, jumped, and, he, and he grabbed that microphone. He said, now throw your hands. And man, I'm talking about the air atmosphere was electric. It was powerful. I was like, yeah, this is what it is. And it was hot. <laughs> and that was the first concert I ever been to. But I had a great time. And it was like, that was something different. And we, usually when I listen to those songs afterward, there was nothing like being in that concert. And you know what? Church is the same way. You can lay on the ground and watch it in your TV. But guess what? When you're in church, there's a power. Uh, there's an atmosphere. There's something about when the Lord comes and meet with his people. You need corporate worship. Now, the enemy's doing everything he can to stop people from going to church. 
These people talking about they got online ministries now, and you can still give online and stuff. Where's that money going? It's going right in their pocket. Well, I need to get some better cameras. Yeah, right. We got the same old ones. I'm just telling y'all, man, don't be fooled. Don't be fooled by this junk. It's not God. God tells you to go to church. Amen? Amen. The Bible said that Jesus went to the temple daily. How much more should we? Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 through 25. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. You know, God is way more faithful to us than we are to him. What if God only showed up on certain days? What if God didn't show up when you needed him? But everybody here can honestly say that there's been times in my life when I didn't deserve it. There's been times in my life when I was jacked up, but God showed up anyway. And I'm an example of that right now. Why? Because God is faithful. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Consider one another. You don't have to get the last donut. Consider your brother. Amen. Stop letting your kids get whole donuts and take a bite and throw the rest in the trash. Somebody bought that. Amen. Can we say amen to that donut? We can say, hey, come on. And what a kid, when, when I was growing up, you couldn't get coffee if you were a child. I don't know, some of y'all, this, this is a different day and age. My grandma used to give us something called milky water. <laughs> she would get carnation milk and put it in there and put some sugar in there and say, there you go. And it was like our little coffee. We loved our little milky water, boy. But nowadays, kids get coffee. They ain't wired enough. Man. Come on, anyway, that's all right. He said, let us hold fast to the confession of our faith. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is the manner of some. There's some people that's forsaking the assembly. And if you know better, you need to do what? You already know. If you know better, do better. Don't forsake the assembly. But exhorting one another, as so much as more do you see the day approaching. You know what? There's going to be a day when all of God's people are going to gather together, and Jesus is going to be in the midst, and there's going to be the biggest table. You think that was a fish fry out there? Amen. That's going to be the biggest table that the earth has ever known when every believer. And you know what? If you prejudice, you need to get right with God because you're not saved. The Bible said that there's going to be people in heaven from every nation, every tribe, every tongue, and they're going to be giving glory to the Lord. You need to get things right. Why? Because there's a day coming, and you don't know when it's going to be. Everybody's talking about this eclipse, and it could be me. It could be some kind of end-time prophecy and all that kind of stuff. You scared, preacher? No. Because I'm right with God. If I leave this parking lot and somebody T-boned me and hits me and kills me dead on the spot, hey, I'm a, I'll be in heaven. And I always tell my wife, don't cry for me. Be happy and don't try to pray me back. Because I'm going to be mad. <laughs> I always tell her, if I ever get on life support, give them a couple days and then pull the old plug. Don't spend all that money. Especially on no burial, because this old course, the VA going to bury me, AJ. Amen. I ain't got to pay for no burial. I'm 100% service connected. They going to bury this old course. Don't pay for that. Because folks will try to use you. Amen. No, literally, they, they play on, on, on your grief. My mother spent $40,000 on the African mahogany casket to bury my dad in. And I said, Mama, why are you doing that? She said, it's the last thing I can do for your dad, baby, before I die myself. You know what they probably did? They probably rolled this corpse apart and put that casket right back on the showroom floor. I don't believe people. I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't believe you. Show me. 
Show me. I would have been standing right there. I want to see you throw the dirt on it. I want to see the whole thing covered. I want to see the tombstone put there. If you dig it up after them. But first of all, I want to spend that much on no casket. Don't be stupid, y'all. Come on. Amen. As a part of the church, I must not, again, please, y'all, that, that's just, do what you want to do. Amen. If you want to put $50,000 in the ground, praise God. If you got money like that, pray, hey, we need some money to put a new floor in here. Yeah, come on. So, hey, give to the Lord. Amen. We need to put a new floor in Lighthouse. Amen. Amen. So, so he said that, that he's faithful who promised. Let us consider one another. That's how you know that you're a part of the church, you're a part of the body of Christ, because you care about your brothers and sisters. Amen. When somebody's down, I feel for them. Amen. I pray for them. I want the best for their life. Again, if God blesses you with a new car, I'm on your side. Praise God. If he blesses you with a new house, hey, man, I'm not going to be jealous. I'm not going to hate on you. I'm going to be happy. If he blesses you with a new job that got better hours and get more money, I'm on your side. Thank God that God can bless his people. That lets me know one thing, that God is still in the blessing business. Amen. And if he blesses somebody else he can bless me too all right Romans chapter 10 verses 14 and 15 how shall they I'm sorry how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher and how shall they preach unless they are sent Everybody behind the pulpit, y'all, is not called by God. Some people were sent, and some jokers just went. <laughs> Amen. And that's what I don't understand. How come people don't ask? Sister Gina, how come people don't ask for these credentials of these preachers? You go to these churches, why don't you ask? Ask them some questions. Hey, tell me about your life, Pastor. I mean, if I, before I join this church, I don't have nothing to hide. i tell you about it all. Amen. I love telling my testimony. Amen. You ask me, I'll, I'll be glad. <laughs> but, but they don't ask questions. Amen. Pastor, I, so you've been married a few times. What, what's, what's up with that? <laughs> your wife is still alive. We, and you, and what, what, why don't people ask questions? Can somebody say amen? I'm, I'm just being honest. And I'm not saying we're trying to keep everybody in life. If God moves you on, praise the Lord. But again, before you join another church, ask some questions. Find out something about this dude. Be around him a little bit. Learn something about his life because I'm not going to just follow anybody. My soul is too important for that. These people just follow anybody. Where did you go to seminary? Ask the questions. Well, I don't feel like you have to. Really? Would you lay on an operating table and let somebody cut your brain open, talking about they're a brain surgeon, and they ain't been to the medical school? <laughs> or would you let somebody work on your $60,000 Mercedes that doesn't have an ASC certified license? Now, you can do what you want. You tell me your soul ain't more important than that? You buy Jordans off of eBay, and they don't have a little thing on it to say they authentic? Now, what up now? I'm, just, I'm just trying to put it to where you can understand. Amen. But nobody asks questions. Ask these dudes questions. How did, you do, have, how did God call you to preach? Like I said, ask me. I love to tell folks. Because everybody that's standing behind a pulpit that has a true calling from God. Listen to me, listen to me. God has called them. They can tell you when they were called. They can tell you how they were called. They can tell you the exact time it was. They know it just like it was yesterday. Why? Because there's a time in ministry that the devil's going to put you up against the wall and the only thing you got to hold on to is, uh, God, I know you call me. Uh, it may not be working out, but God, I know you call me. Uh, just like us when we first moved here, everything was crossed 
crumbling around us. I said, God, I know you called me. And if you call me, you're going to work things out. The problem is, is that a lot of these folks ain't called. Again, that's the mark of a church. Just like at a school, there's a principal at a school. It should be anyway. Some of these schools act like there ain't no principal, but anyway, they should should be one. There's certain things that should be happening in a church. There should be a senior pastor that God called, that God did things in his life, that has a testimony. These things should be in place. Amen. It's a structure. As they said before, God ain't going to bless no mess. There's a structure. So as a part of the church, I must practice corporate worship. All right, number three, as a part of the church, I must practice close fellowship. I'm going to say that one again. As a part of the church, I must practice close fellowship. There's a problem when you come in and out of the church and spend your dime and and pay your time and go out and nobody in church knows you. That's a problem. That's not how the early church was. And that's not God's design for your life. We are together. We are a body. In the middle of the night, my arm just don't get up and, and go down the street and get McDonald's. Why? Because it's connected to the body. Amen? And see, that's the thing. People don't want to preach that. These people just come in. I heard a guy one time, um, she kind of said, that, I'm just going to go to church that it's because, you know, I go to big churches because I can just hide. That's a problem. What are you hiding? Amen. So you should practice close fellowship. 1 John chapter 1, verses 6 through 7. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Come on now. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us. From all sin. When you don't want to be involved in church and you want to just come and leave and you don't want nobody to know you and all that kind of stuff, there's something wrong with that. You might not be a disciple of Christ. Amen. Acts chapter 5, verse 42. And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus Christ, I'm sorry, Jesus as the Christ. They came together and they fellowshiped. There's a problem when you don't want to fellowship with people. Again, what are you hiding? Amen. Quiet, but that's all right. Good listening weather. All right. All right, the last one, y'all. I'm doing good on time. Praise God. All right, the last one. As a part of the church, I must pray to God for others in the body and myself. I must pray to God, as a part of the church, I must pray to God for others in the body and for myself. Now look at the structure. Look at the um, the, the order. Somebody was telling me years ago that when you pray, the acronym joy should be in your mind. Jesus, others, then yourself. Jesus first is because you don't enter in God's presence without thanking him and blessing his name. Amen. What did David say? I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his course with praise. Come on. That's a way that you come into God's presence. And some of y'all from the old school, you didn't come to your grandmama's house any old kind of way. 
Nowadays, kids don't have, they, they don't have no respect. They just walk in the house, don't speak, don't say good morning, don't say nothing. It wasn't like that when I grew up. You walk in the house, you come in there, good morning, good morning. You kiss some people in the Haitian culture, you kiss everybody. I didn't, I, it took me a while to get, get used to that. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm like, I don't want to be kissing all these folks. I ain't, that just ain't our culture, amen. But anyway, that's, that's, the, that's the culture. You walk in and you greet everybody. You give them a kiss on the cheek and all. Not, not the men, though, but amen, but the ladies. You kiss the ladies and stuff like that. And, um, yeah. But the thing is that, 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 that that's a greeting. You come into your big mama's house or, or whoever, my, my dear's house, and I ain't talking about Tyler Perry. That was, he made that famous, and that was something we used to call our grandmama way back in the days before I knew who a Tyler Perry was. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. But yeah, so that this is the thing that, that you know, you, you come a certain way and give respect, give honor, and you go to God the same way. You don't just go in there barking orders. God, heal me. God, do this. God, save me. God, work on this. No, you go and you thank him. Amen. Amen. Jesus, then others. You pray for other people first. And Norman, I found this to be so true in my life. When you get busy and you get involved and you start praying for everything else and praying for everybody else, somehow God just happens to meet your needs. Why? Because he teaches us to not be selfish. If you're not selfish and you go for others first, then God will always bless you. Amen. Jesus, others, and in yourself. There's nothing wrong with praying for yourself. But everything shouldn't be God, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Which is what some of these churches teach folks. Go get your blessing. Go get your this. Go get your that. What about, what about God? What can I do for you today? Come on now. What about, Lord, what direction do you want me to take? Lord, who do you want me to minister to? God, thank you for this day that you've given me. Direct my life. Order my steps. Show me what to do. Tell me what to say. God, help me today. Not give me, give me, give me, give me. God, do this. God, do that. And then that's it. They'll just say, God, give me this. God, do this. God, do this. I need this done. God, do that. Amen. That's not prayer. Prayer is a two-way conversation. After you talk to God about some things, then you sit down and you listen. It's what the Bible calls meditation. Now, I don't know crazy junk. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. You ain't got to sit, um, you know, a certain way and, mm, and do all this crazy mess. That and lighting candles and all that kind of junk. No, don't do all that. Hey, man, just talk to him. And you'll be surprised. Do, do y'all know that God speaks to people? And some of the issues are that people, because they're always giving God orders, they never stop to listen. And some of the biggest mistakes people have made in their life is because they don't listen to God. Now, I'm just trying to, say, I'm, I'm just trying to save y'all some heartache and some pain. I know people that are living in the bad decisions that they made 40, 50 years earlier and because they prayed, so to speak, but they just ran it by God. They didn't wait on an answer. And some of you are getting ready to make some decisions and you haven't waited. Wait on God to give you an answer. And if he don't answer, then just wait. Now I'm going to put some Bible on it. They that wait on the Lord, come on now, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Come on. They shall walk and not faint. The problem is, the reason why you're weary is because you're doing it in your own power. Wait, I know you don't want to wait. I know it's hard. I know you've been single so long. I know you've been waiting on this house. I know you put in the job applications. Wait! You need to learn that. Because you're going to make a mistake that's going to hurt you. And you better believe that the enemy is right there waiting for you to fall. 
Because you know one thing about God? When you disobey God willingly, you open yourself up for the attacks of the devil. You better wait. I'm warning somebody. Now, you do what you want. Okay? Do what you want to do. But don't say, I didn't tell you. As a part of the church, I must pray to God for others and for myself. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Some of y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. You ain't never been to a church like this, have you? Amen. But that's the thing. That's about when you really go to a place where people are really saved. Amen. There's an excitement about God. Amen. I make it get excited about a football game, but boy, I'm more excited about God because I know one thing. My Redeemer lives, and I don't care if this whole planet burns. He told me that I have a prepared a place for you, that where I am, you may be also. I don't care what happens. The whole world can burn, but God is my Savior. I put my faith faith, my trust, and my hope in him. What are you trusting in? Because your little paycheck. Come on. That's going to be a time when you can't rely on that no more. Then what you going to do? That's going to be a time when your health is going to fade. Then what you going to do? There's going to be a time, sister, when you ain't pretty no more. Age is going to set in. Then what you going to do? Amen. There's going to be a time when you putting everything you got into your children. They going to get grown and they going to leave you. Then what you going to do? Uh, there may be a time when your spouse says, I'm fed up and I want somebody else. Then what you going to do? There's going to be a time when your education is not going to be enough. Then what you going to do? Amen. What you going to do? But when you stand on the rock, come on now. He said, I am the rock. He the alpha. He the omega. He said, I'm the beginning. I'm the end. He said, if you don't believe that I'm the Christ, you will die in your sins. What are you standing on? Stand on Jesus. Oh, yeah, I'm a fool for him. As a part of the church, I must pray for others in the body and for myself. What happened, Sister Rhonda, when people would love God's people so much, they didn't care what it took. Just let me invite somebody to church. If I have to clean up diapers from all, out of the trash cans, if I have to, just as long as one more person can hear the gospel, if I have to pick up tables just so the unbelievers can come and get the gospel. It's not, but, but nowadays, Shannon, people want to complain. They complain about doing God's work. They complain about the bleeding of the sheep. They complain that people are parking where they're not supposed to do. They complain because the kids throw paper up. Stop doing that. Amen. We want them saved. Amen. Amen. Stop complaining. And I'm going to tell you something. You think you're going to get a reward from God, but one thing that God hates is a complaining spirit. All you got to do is read Exodus. He hates it. He said, you're going to die in the wilderness because of your complaints. I brought you out. I brought you out of slavery. I was the one that called the water to come out the rock. I was the one that called the firstborn in Pharaoh's house to die. I was the one that sent the plagues. I was the one that parted the Red Sea. And you got the nerve to complain. You'll die in the wilderness. You better stop complaining. Because if you do it with a heart like that, you don't have a blessing anyway. And I'm going to tell you something, I'd rather do it myself because I've done it before. Amen? I'll clean the floor. If nobody else will do it, God, I'll do it. And I've said that before. God, if they won't do it and they'll complain, I'll do it. You made me able. I'm able-bodied, God. My old back may not be what it used to be, but if I got to scrub the floor with my hands and knees to make it to the kingdom so one more person can get saved, God, I'll do it. I've done it before. I moved chairs. Amen. I didn't come up and get saved. I wasn't just a pastor from off day one off Jump Street. Amen. I did it all. 
I cleaned floors, I cleaned toilets, and I did it with gladness. I served tables in the fellowship hall. I did these things. I washed cars. I've shined shoes. I've done it all. Anything to be what God wants me to be. If nobody else will do it, I'll do it, God. It'll be me. I'll take the reward. You may say, well, preacher, people are ungrateful. What did he say about that? You're blessed when they revile you and speak evil of you and do all things for you. He said, great is your reward. Where? In heaven. In heaven. The problem is, Sister Alicia, that people are looking for their reward right here. You're not going to get it all here. I don't care what them jacked up preachers on TV told you. You're not going to get it all here. As a matter of fact, come on, I don't want it here. Amen. He said, lay not up for yourself treasures on the earth where moss and rust corrupts. Amen. And where thieves can break through and steal. He said, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. Guess what? There's no ghetto in heaven. I don't care what Tupac told you. Amen. There is no people stealing the rims. There is no people breaking in houses. Amen. If you wear your jewelry, guess what? It don't matter about your jewelry because the streets are paved with this stuff. It's nothing. God owns it all. Come on. Amen. Talking about the pillars of the church. I'm going to end with this, y'all. Years ago, we were, y'all hear us talking about this place, 2952. That was the church that we first started off in. And I remember it was a Bible study. Dottie, you was there. Sister Mayberry was there. Deacon Roberts and Sister Roberts, you were there. And there was a few more other people. And after the Bible study, everybody was gone. And I was just praying, standing there praying. And it was just from those few people. And God spoke to me just as clear as day. I'm going to tell you something. God still speaks to folks. And I'm not always the one talking about God spoke to me and I had this dream and all that kind of stuff because some of that junk is just garbage. I'm just going to tell you. Some people come with this mess and <laughs> amen. You know somebody's a prophet by what, it, if they, what they say comes to pass. If it don't, then they're a liar. Ain't no oops say at the Lord. You, you just lied on God. <laughs> amen. But anyway, yeah, so I was standing there and I was praying and, and, and it was just only those few people. And God said, from these people, I'm going to build Lighthouse. And then I start praying, says that Lena, what about all the other people? And I and I never got an answer. But the thing about it is, is that a lot of them are not here no more. Terry, God loves us. And you need to understand this. God loves you. He cares about you. He wants what's best for your life. He wants you to have a good future. But if you ever think he needs you, you're out of your mind. He wants you to be a part of his kingdom. But he said, if you don't praise me, the stones will cry out. God don't need you, honey. (laughs) And guess what? He don't need me either. And like I always say, a dog can get up here and preach the gospel. And I'm going to tell you what, he can draw a bigger crowd than any preacher on earth because everybody on earth is going to want to see the preaching dog. (laughs) I'm telling you, God don't need us. The pillars of the church, you got to pray. You got to remain in the body, there's protection in the body. When you're isolated from the body, the enemy is going to destroy you. You need close fellowship, and you need to know the scriptures. Let's pray. Father.